This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Next, I'd like to call on um, uh, Rachel Nava, who is the Chief Operating Officer and Senior Vice President of the University of California, and also co-chair, along with Wendell Brase, of the uh, Global Climate Leadership Council, which is the UC-wide entity that is charged with uh, guiding this. Rachel has provided just wonderful leadership in this area, and we look forward to hearing your remarks, Rachel. Good morning, everyone. I am so pleased to be here. And um, I first off want to thank you all for joining us and traveling from all over the state and elsewhere to, to be a part of this. I want to thank Chancellor Kosla and uh, Vice Chancellor Sandy Brown for hosting the summit today. And um, I mostly want to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to Professor Ramanathan, who has been the uh, chair of the summit and has pulled together um, a monumentous effort of faculty and staff here at the university to um, explore what we can do all collectively um, to help uh, address the issues of climate change. So I've been asked to, to just briefly give you a little bit of an overview about the university's carbon neutrality initiative. As you heard from others, uh, the, the president, when she joined the university in September of 2013, one of the very first things, in fact, probably the very first thing she did at her, region, her first regents meeting in November was launch this very important carbon neutrality initiative. And um, she set forward for us a very ambitious and daunting goal, which was that we, as a university system, need to be carbon neutral by 2025. And as the person who has functional responsibility for this goal, I'll tell you, I, it keeps me up at night, um, because it is an ambitious thing to do. And as you know, we have 10 campuses, uh, five medical centers, three national labs. We are running uh, large cities in each of our communities uh, that have intensive energy needs. And uh, for us to figure out how to be carbon neutral is uh, no small feat. And will require um, an amazing um, uh, nexus of research, uh, uh, climate-friendly uh, business practices, um, and I think ultimately uh, brave leadership to do what we need to do. Um, you'll hear from President Napolitano tomorrow morning, and uh, she will talk to you about uh, why she brought this together and really um, the, the need for us to pull together our pioneering climate research and um, our longstanding commitment to helping new, move the needle around uh, uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and I'll say that this is more than... Um, just about sustainability. It's more about more than just having efficient green buildings, which I will talk about. Um, it's not just about sustainable transportation and zero net waste reduction or sustainable food. It's really about a, a movement of um, diverse strategies and practices in order for us to get where we need to go. So um, in order, as you heard uh, Dave Austin mention, uh, the president pulled together a Global Climate Leadership Council, which uh, is um, meant to inform and advise her about how we can get to this uh, goal of carbon neutrality. And I'm, I'm fortunate to get a, a chance to co-chair with uh, Vice Chancellor at uh, Irvine, Wendell Brazi, who will be here later this afternoon, who has been an amazing advocate uh, for all this work across the university system, and has certainly, in my short tenure here of eight months with the university, been an incredible teacher uh, and um, support in helping us figure out how, what we need to do. So you can see that um, the president took a very wide view of uh, how we might get here, and she brought together experts from all different parts of the university, uh, including faculty, staff, students, 
um, provosts, uh, researchers, and external advisors. And we are meeting regularly to look at a variety of different strategies around engagement, action, um, to help achieve uh, and accelerate our progress towards our goals. So what are we doing and uh, what are our strategies? Well, this is a very uh, pared down version of the many things that we're looking at, but the foundation of our strategy really primarily is to reduce our energy consumption across all of our campuses. Um, and we are doing that through a variety of means around energy efficiency, um, looking at how we produce renewable energy um, on our campuses and how we generate that off campus as well. And we have made tremendous progress on both those fronts. Um, and I'll show you some data um, shortly. However, I do want to say that this is not an easy thing to do. It's more than just having green buildings. It's more than just putting solar on every single parking lot and rooftop we have on our campuses. Um, we have energy intensive laboratories and hospitals which require um, our ability to deliver uh, 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 carbon-free uh, electricity to them. And uh, it requires a, I think, aggressive approach to how we are mitigate our natural gas usage, which is a major source of our carbon footprint in our university system. So uh, this just shows you uh, how much money we've saved as a result of our uh, efforts so far around energy efficiency. So as I said, our first priority is to reduce electricity consumption. It not only saves money for us, but also reduces our greenhouse gas emissions and other environmental impacts. Uh, we formed an award-winning uh, statewide energy partnership with our four investor-owned utilities back in 2004, and as a result of that partnership and many of the investments we've made around energy efficiency, we've saved a total of $160 million in utility costs, which we can then redirect to our core academic mission. So that's about $28 million annually. So uh, how are we doing this? One of our strategies, obviously, is to focus on carbon-free electricity. And uh, we had set our goal for ourselves of um, generating 10 megawatts of solar by 2014 on site on our campuses. And you can see that we've more than tripled that goal already. Uh, we also uh, became a uh, electricity service provider. So we're, we're now procuring wholesale power for our campuses that have direct access. And in building that expertise within the university, it had afforded us the opportunity to go out and buy 80 megawatts of solar uh, at a farm in uh, the Central Valley. And that's the largest solar power purchase of any university in the country. By 2017, about 60% of our imported electricity uh, for our campuses that have direct access will come from solar power. Uh, we are well on our way to carbon-free electricity, but there do remain some regulatory challenges for us for those campuses that aren't direct, ac direct access, which we need to continue to work towards. On the natural gas front, I will say this is the most challenging part for the university, and this is the thing that's going to either make or break our ability to achieve our carbon neutrality goal. Uh, we are looking at a variety of strategies to address this, and I hope today's conference uh, will help um, um, drive us towards that, um, that intense and scary goal. I'll tell you. Okay, so let's talk about green buildings, because I think it's important to highlight this. Um, over... Uh, the course of several years, we've made a commitment to having LEED certified uh, buildings as our campuses and medical centers grow. It's important that we make sure our, our facilities are energy efficient. We have over 200 LEED certifications uh, for our buildings, which is more than any university uh, in the country. We've also been recognized for our work um, around um, having uh, energy efficient schools. Uh, CR Magazine recently ranked uh, campuses across the nation, and many of you know UC Irvine was ranked for the second year in a row as the coolest school in the nation. <laughs> Definitely worthy of applause. We had five UC campuses ranked in the top 20, seven in the top 50. We were also recently uh, recognized by the Princeton Review Green College Honor Roll, where UC Berkeley and UC Irvine were uh, recognized. So uh, this is no small feat, and we continue to be at the top of the list, uh, not in small part to all the work that you all are doing on your campuses every day. 
When I'm out talking to groups about uh, UC's carbon neutrality initiative, I also often get questions, well, how do I get involved? What is it? What does it mean? Uh, what can we do? So as one of our uh, projects that President Napolitano funded, uh, we decided to embark on an engagement campaign uh, to get our students, staff, and faculty, uh, one, aware of the carbon neutrality initiative, Two, to get an opportunity for them to understand how their uh, practices and behaviors are impacting their carbon footprints. And three, to get them engaged in actually to making behavioral changes. So we've launched the Cool Campus Challenge, which is happening right now. It's an online competition, because we all love a good competition, uh, for campuses to compete against each other, to uh, make pledges about their uh, workplace habits, their school habits, their personal habits, and make changes take public transportation, uh, change out their lighting to LED efficient lighting bulbs, um, uh, make differences in terms of their food choices. And uh, this is a really exciting opportunity for all of us to work together. Um, if you haven't uh, been to the website, I encourage you to do uh, take a look at it. It's uh, thecoolcampuschallenge.org. In the first two weeks we launched the challenge, we had over 10,000 participants, which is great. Uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback. Uh, there's a nice social media as uh, aspect to this, so hashtag you cool. If you, if you go onto Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, you can see all sorts of fun pictures. Um, and I will say, I checked last night, UC Irvine was in first place in terms of total points. UC Davis was a close second, and UCLA is in third. There's lots of time, everybody, so go out and make your pledges. And uh, this is a familiar place. This is uh, Chancellor Dirks from UC Berkeley, and he wants you to take the Cool Campus Challenge. He's looking pretty cool there, I think. Okay, lastly, um, I just want to leave you all with the importance of what we're trying to achieve and actually where we are in our progress in trying to lower our greenhouse gas emissions. And um, you can see uh, the very top red bar is our 2014 policy goal. We have surpassed that. We are working now towards our 2020 policy goal. And down there at the bottom, 10 years from now, is where we need to be in terms of our carbon neutrality goal. We have a ways to go. And um, I want to enlist all of you to um, help us figure out how we get to this important uh, goal. Not only just for the university, but for us. We're going to hear over the course of the next two days, how do we support uh, municipalities, the state, the nation, our global partners to um, leverage the research, the technologies, the business practices that we are utilizing here in the university, and how do we accelerate those and share those and spread them throughout the world. And if anybody can do it, it's the University of California. I have no question about that. And I'm certainly excited to be working with all of you and to learn as much as we can over the next two days about how we can get to that bottom orange dot there on the graph. And I will just say personally as a, um, as a mom of two young children, I don't think there's any more important work uh, than the work that we're doing here today to help um, uh, deal with this very critical global crisis. So I'm honored to get a chance to partner with all of you to do this work, and I thank you very much for your interest and um, engagement in it. Thank you. Thank you.